Excited to uh, to finally be in game week. Obviously, it's been a whirlwind eight months um, for our guys, uh, for for us as a coaching staff, a lot to get done. And and uh, what eight months may sound like a long time, but it's a it's a very short window to get all the things you need uh, in order to get a football team prepared to go execute on <clears throat> on Saturday. And so, I think Coach DeBoer's done a really tremendous job. Just preparing our guys through all the situations, um, getting our guys prepared for uh, all the things that they need to in order to to execute and maximize their opportunities. Um, I think from a from a, uh, a workload standpoint, our our strength staff, our training staff has done a really tremendous job navigating our guys, um, getting them ready for fall camp, and then getting them ready here for the season. I think you know the the days leading up from the last scrimmage that we had whatever that was, a week, a little over a week ago to where we are right now. Um, we've done a great job of managing their bodies and getting some of their legs back and all those things and still being physical and keeping the main thing the main thing at the same time. And uh, and so here we are at game week, and, and we've got a little bit of a jump on Western Kentucky than we would in a normal Monday, which is really nice to kind of ease into uh, to that first game plan and let our guys get a feel for how we run scout teams um, how we game plan. Um, most of our off season is spent on teaching the guys from a defensive perspective. Uh, we teach them the, the the defensive concepts. We never teach them exactly, you know, what their job is. We talk about the the bigger concept of the defense. This is how we play cover three. This is how we play cover one. Now here's your role within the framework of the defense. Here's how teams are going to attack us in these coverages. The weaknesses, the strengths all those things. Then we talk about the situational application. Here's how cover three or this call is applied on third down versus the red zone versus two minute when they need a field goal and two minute when they need a touchdown. Those are two totally different scenarios and we apply our concepts differently. Um, but now uh, the majority of time will be focused on offensive recognition. And I think that's where uh, we have done a great job over the years in getting our players uh, to play defense with anticipation, uh, whereas defense is inherently reactionary. Um, we're starting to get our guys to understand those formations, those concepts um, that, that will happen in downs to downs where a guy can make a difference in a ball game. And so our players are leaning into that really well. We've got some very smart young men on defense, some guys that have seen a lot of ball, some guys that have not seen a lot of collegiate football. Uh, and I think our leaders are doing a really good job of kind of setting the tone of what those scout periods are supposed to look like. So it's game week. We're ready to roll. Thank you, Coach. Let's start with uh, left side, Chase. Coach, wanted to ask you about communication in the secondary. Malachi Moore being a veteran in the middle of the field, how much has he been able to lead the secondary in that respect? And other than Malachi, who are some of the best communicators back there? <clears throat> That's a great question. Well, when you have a guy like Malachi Moore, you, you really set the standard in terms of um, – you know the leadership. Um, I think when you when you talk about leadership and being a person that it emulates what it's supposed to look like, right? Leading by example. Um, he is uh, one of the hardest workers that I've ever seen in practice every single day. Uh, whether it's a workout, whether it's a walkthrough, whether it's a practice, he really has sets sets the standard of what it's supposed to look like, down in and down out, play in and play out. When he goes to the sideline, he's constantly communicating with other guys on the defense about what we need to fix, what we saw out there in real time. You know, him and Deontay Lawson, I think, are, are truly special communicators that have had a lot of experience in this defense. But when you add guys like Jihad Campbell, who have not, who have been here, um, but maybe have not had the, the rep base of experience like those guys, I think he's done a tremendous job. Uh, but particularly on the back ground, uh, on the back end, I think Keon Sab has been phenomenal. Uh, his ability, I mean, he, I was so impressed even with Week One. Uh, when he got here and we started doing some little walkthroughs and meetings and all that kind of stuff, his retention of our defense, and now he's starting to play with anticipation. He's communicating at a high level, and if you can keep up with Malachi Moore, I think that's a pretty uh, pretty great job there. You've got a kind of an interesting case with T.J. Finley. This will be his third time playing Alabama with his third school, and then you also faced him at South last year. Does yeah. that affect the way you, you scout him and then – Having seen him before, what does he offer as a quarterback? Yeah, you know, I mean, obviously, uh, when uh, a player has had experience, right, playing against the team, right, there's a certain level of comfort, if, especially if you've been in a stadium or whatever that may be. 
Um, but then, you know, when you face the guy, you've seen in real time how he responds uh, to success, how he responds to adversity. Um, you know, you, uh, quarterbacks are so much of, of what progression uh, does this quarterback go through? What is his pre-snap routine? What does his cadence look like? Um, and so getting to see some of those things in real time, right, um, has, uh, you know, certainly helps. I would say it probably helps on both sides in, in some ways. Um, but uh, really impressed uh, with him a year ago. I thought, you know, he's got a really good release. Uh, he can make all the throws. Um, I thought he did a really good job of managing their offense really well. Um, you know, took what was given early, but can work through a progression. Uh, and so it'll be interesting to see how, you know, Tyson and their staff utilizes him maybe different than what G.J. Kenny did or, or the Auburn staff before that or uh, whatever it may be, right? But, but I think he's got a skill set that you can utilize in a number of different ways. And then, you know, he's a big son of a gun, you know, and so uh, he's a guy that can fall forward, right? And if he does, you know, he's going to go for three or four yards just getting downhill. Uh, one of the things that we really lean into or what are their, um, you know, uh, escape styles, you know, he may have a very different escape style than what we've seen from Ty Simpson or Jalen Milrow. And those are things that we want to get our guys very clued into uh, as we're getting ready to, uh, to match these guys up uh, from a personnel standpoint. Just what kind of progress have you seen from the cornerback group as a whole from practice one through now, I guess, 21 or 20? And then is that a group that you can maybe envision playing multiple guys at in game one? Yeah, I think um, I, ha I think uh, Maurice Linquist does a tremendous job, um, and he's done a tremendous job with those players. You know, you look at it, uh, whether they're guys that have experience in college football uh, but did not play here at Alabama, or their young freshmen. Um, I, I think everyone that in that room is trending in the right direction, and that to me is a, a great indicator of, of tremendous coaching. I think it's also a tremendous indicator of young men that have an opportunity and are trying to make the most of their opportunity. And so, you know, when you got guys like Damani Jackson who have played, um, you know, the game, but he's learning a new defense, right? He's learning a new culture, a new system, a way of doing things, right? I think he has really taken to that. I've seen great leaps from him. Day-Day, uh, -Day, Deshaun Jones has really done a tremendous job in a short amount of time. I, I think from where he got, when he got here to where he is right now, just physically, I think he's changed his body. You often don't see that from older players, but I think his body has changed, and that's a credit to Dave Blue and our strength staff as well. Um, but those younger freshmen have been uh, really impressive to me. You know, um, when you look at guys uh, that are, you know, all three of those uh, young freshman DBs, right, should have still been in high school this spring. And what was impressive to me is when they would make a mistake, they would work to correct it and often would not make it again. Um, I think each one of them have taken a, 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 a major step forward through the off season, uh, through the summertime and into fall camp. Uh, and so you're going to see a lot of them play. Uh, and so I think it's, it's something that's really exciting. Uh, I've said this before, uh, experience is finite. Sometimes we're going to have to go through some of those um, adversities, right? You're going to take your lumps every now and then as a young freshman. Uh, but what I've been excited about is those guys have shown that when they do make a mistake that they can get it fixed moving forward. And if they'll do that, you know, they'll continue to elevate their game throughout the season. Yeah, I believe, uh, what was it 22 that you faced Western Kentucky at South Alabama? I mean, what stands out about their offense and the challenges there that they do? Well, I, you know, I've always been impressed with Tyson Helton, with Clay Helton. I've gone against those guys. You know, they really kind of come from the, um, you know, all of those guys. Brom, um, you know, Jeff Brom and the Petrinos and um, some of what they do schematically, um, I think is one of the better offensive systems in the country right now. They do a really good job of attacking you vertically down the field, but they take easy access throws as you give them in the passing game. Um, they're creative in the run game. Uh, they're not afraid to, to run their quarterback and, and get in some of the one-plus offensive game as well to, to create you know extra matchups and, and, and extra numbers at the point of attack in the run game. Um, and then, you know, I, I think, you know, they're creative guys. I mean, they, they – 
Uh, they're going to utilize tempo to their advantage. Um, they do a really good job of, of working formations um, in and out of tempo, a lot of different formations and nuances that maybe you haven't worked that you got to be able to fix in real time in a game. Um, and then, you know, uh, you, you see all types of tricks. You see all types of different shots and stuff like that. I think, you know, they're aggressive play callers. And I think, you know, it's something that's – uh, I've seen them over the years, and it's really admirable, right, the way they go about things, and it's um, impressive how aggressive they are in certain areas. So, so we'll have our work cut out for us. This is, uh, you know, you can say what you want about a group of five versus power four matchup, whatever we are now. But, uh, um, you know, this is, a, this is a very dynamic offense, and they, they will challenge us in a number of ways schematically. So we'll gotta have our work cut out for us. Stand the right side. Uh, have you utilized Brian Ellis at all, given his experience working with Tyson on that staff? You know, we're gonna. I mean, we're gonna utilize all the resources of our of our program and and personnel and people and experiences that they've had to to maximize our opportunity for game day. Go to the left side, Stephen. He had to wait his time, Coach. But what impresses you the most about Q Robinson as one of those wolf guys? Yeah, I think uh, you know Q. Um, has been here a long time. He's worked his tail off day in and day out. He's a guy that has, um, you know, has probably had the majority of his role on special teams. Um, but when he's gone in, uh, he knows what to do. Um, I think he has elevated his game from a production standpoint uh, on defense. I've seen some really good things from him in terms of, of not just being a guy that knows his job, but knows how to create. Uh, in the backfield and, and create in some of the things that we're doing with him and, and, and past defense as well. And so I've been really impressed with him. He's a great leader, steady presence out there on the field, and he works his tail off. And so he's a, another one of those guys that's a great example bearer of what it's supposed to look like. And he's not afraid to, uh, to have the, um, you know, the uncomfortable conversations, the challenging conversations with somebody that he sees that may not be holding the standard the way that he knows it's supposed to be done. So that, that cannot be undervalued uh, with, with especially a younger defense as we have here. So. Jump to the back row on the right, Ryan. <clears throat> Coach, a good question was asked to Coach Sheridan about the steadiness of Kalen DeBoer. You've coached with him as well. When game week comes around, what, what can you tell about to the fans about what kind of coach he is on game week and yeah. how that leadership is helpful come Saturday? Well, um, you know, I think one of the things that has always impressed me about Kalen is um, whether you're whether you're game planning or you're hanging out on a on a back porch in a pool, right? Or you're, you know, in the fourth quarter in the bit middle of a big game. He's the same guy, um, and that is a superpower. It really is for him, the way uh, in which he is able to keep the main thing the main thing amidst all the noise. Um, is something that I think has served him really well as a head coach. It's served him well as a coordinator. And I think our players lean into that humble confidence that he shows in those moments. Um, you don't take the Alabama job after Coach Saban if you, ha if you don't have a certain level of confidence about you. But there's a, a level of humility that he carries himself that I think you know, Greg Byrne made the perfect hire um, you know, in, in terms of, of what Kalen brings to the table for this team. Uh, and carrying on the legacy that, you know, uh, that certainly Coach Saban has said and then other greats before him as well. And so um, knowing that was a huge reason of why I wanted to come here. Um, I loved my opportunity as, as, and, and loved my time at South Alabama and enjoyed being a head coach. But I think some of those things, right, being in the foxhole with him and seeing the confidence that he carries day in and day out was something that I wanted to be a part of his staff here as well. And so excited to go through the uh, – the foxhole again with him. Uh, we got three more questions left. We'll start with Katie on the left side. I know this time of year there's always excitement about it being the first game, but when it's your first game at a new job, whether it was when you were a head coach at South or now as a coordinator, is there kind of like a different anticipation or nervousness, or do you get to a point in your coaching career where there's not really nerves anymore? Um, no, I think there's always nerves, you know, to a degree, right? You're always – it's like uh, it's like getting ready for a, a a big trip with a family of five, right? Three boys. What what did I forget? What did I miss? You know what I mean? Did I pack everything the right way? Um, you know, I think uh, you're trying to go through those checklists, make sure that you did all the right things, and then it's game day. It's exciting. You know, one of the fun things about college football is that you only get 
a, a, a small amount of opportunities to show all the work that you've put in uh, year round, right? So we, we put all this work in, we put all these man hours in, all the time and energy sacrifices that we make away from our family for three and a half hours, right? Of getting to show what, what you know, really what we have to show for ourselves. And so uh, from that perspective, right, it's exciting. You know, um, it'll, it'll be something that our players are, are chomping at the bit, our coaches are ready to go. Uh, but I would say, you know, I feel in my element as a coordinator. Um, I loved, you know, my time as a head coach and I enjoyed that as well. Uh, but this feels very familiar to me um, and something that uh, I just enjoy calling plays. It's probably one of the things I missed uh, the last three years is not getting to be the, you know, the play caller on game day. And I uh, am looking forward to doing that again. Kind of continuing the question about Q Robinson, what have you seen from the entire Wolf room from practice one to this point, and what do you want to see out of them on Saturday? Well, you know, Christian Robinson, um, I have known for a number of years. He's worked in this system before. He worked in my dad, coached the linebackers um, uh, alongside with him, and so he knows what the standard's supposed to look like schematically in our defense and, and, and the versatility that that Wolf position brings to our defense as well. Um, I've been really impressed uh, with that group as a room. I think they all have versatile skill sets that we're going to be able to utilize in different ways schematically. Uh, personnel groupings that we have on the field, right? You may see multiple of those guys at different times in the games, um, uh, depending on the situation. And so um, their ability to do multiple things uh, from a mental standpoint uh, and then from a physical standpoint will allow us to utilize them in a number of different ways. And so I think Christian's done a really good job of, of getting them prepared for that. And I think those guys have really leaned into that process as well. Coach, what are some qualities about your defense that you learned during fall camp that you need to see translate on Saturday? Yeah, that's a good question. I think, um, you know, one of the things um, that, that we always look for is there's, there is a um, – there is an energy that you have to play the game with from a defensive standpoint. There's a certain level of juice. There's a physicality that the game is supposed to be played with from a de defensive standpoint. I think when you turn on the tape um, and, and really watching as a head coach the last three years has only solidified that in my mind of how the game is supposed to be played defensively. When you turn on the tape, it is evident that those guys play at a fever pitch or they don't. And uh, we always want to be the team that when you turn on the tape, right, we are playing a swarm defense mentality football, right? Uh, 11 bodies that are responsible of stopping the offense, whether run or pass, they're playing with tremendous effort and finish. That's four to six seconds from point A to point B with violent intentions when we get there, right? And that needs to show up on Saturday. So those are the things that I think I've seen from them. Uh, they took it to another level. I think in the springtime, you're still learning this defense all the nuances are complicated and some of the things you're still thinking about. Uh, but I saw them kind of kick some things into gear uh, as we went through fall camp and, and probably finished in that last scrimmage and probably as good of a place as you could ask for right now. So, uh, but we got to go do it. We're going to take some lumps, right? Those, those things, adversity is going to hit and they're going to happen. Uh, uh, but, but how we respond to it and if we can keep the main thing, the main thing, which is playing with tremendous aggression, uh, I think we're going to be fine on defense here. All right, thanks, guys. Roll Tide.